Hello and welcome to another deck set here on Chief SMTG. So with Aether Revolt came a lot of combos, some infinite combos in standard. But there was one very promising card that produces an in infinite loop in modern. This card being Renegade Rallyer combined with Safi Eric's Daughter, giving you a nice loop if you can sack Renegade Rallyer. So we've built a modern deck aimed to take full advantage of this. So this is Modern Ban Chord. The combo is built around four copies of Renegade Rallyer, four copies of Safi Eric's Daughter, and it is, functions in a similar version to the Abazan Company decks, except we use a different sack outlet. We use two copies of Blasting Station. So what happens is we have Renegade Rallyer, Safi, and Blasting Station out. We sacrifice Safi to um, return Renegade Rallyer when it dies. This triggers Revolt. We then tap Blasting Station to sacrifice Renegade Rallyer. When Renegade Rallyer dies, it comes back into play because of the Safi trigger. It then brings Safi back with it. This has the effect of untapping Blasting Station. And we can keep the loop going for infinite damage, though usually you'll only need about 20. So as I mentioned, this deck is quite similar to the Abzan Company decks. Uh, so we play four Collected Company and four Chord of Calling to help us find our creatures. Chord of Calling is particularly powerful. It means you can play more of a, a toolbox effect of creatures. You can just go and shoot for them when you need them. And in order to play these spells quicker, you know, Modern is a turn three, turn four format. Uh, we play two Birds of Paradise and four Noble Hierarch. It's worth noting that if you do want to play this deck, but you think, oh god, Noble Hierarch, it's an expensive card... You could substitute in something like Avacyn's Pilgrim here. You play four birds, two pilgrims. It makes your mana a fair bit worse, but I think uh, for a inverted commas budget deck, it would be fine. As I mentioned, we get to play a toolbox of creatures. So we'll start with three copies of Trophy Mage, another new addition for Mace Revolt. This is in the deck uh, and makes it a band deck. Um, purely because it means we can tutor for a creature, which then tutors to find our blasting station, which otherwise this deck wouldn't be able to do, and as a, is an important piece of the combo, uh, we need to be able to find it, so Trophy Mage is great for that. It can also be played off of Collected Company, so just generally a great card in this deck. We play two copies of Wall of Roots. Wall of Roots is a decent ground blocker against things like Naya Zoo, uh, it's also really good with combo because you can put a minus one counter on it and then tap it. So effectively it does double duty. Uh, we play a single copy of Spellskite. Spellskite is a modern all-star. It's great against a wide variety of decks from thing, like anything from burn to infect. Two copies of Scavenging Ooze. Lots of decks in modern like to use the graveyard, whether it be for Tom or Goyfin Grimflayer, for Snapcaster Mage. Or this, the chance that Dredge is still a threat despite um, the banning of Golgari Gate Grave Troll. It's important to have Scavenging News, therefore. And we also play a copy of Eternal Witness. Eternal Witness is good uh, against Hand Disruption. If, say, you're against a Grixis Control deck that Thought Seizes away uh, one of your collected companies, you can always just go and uh, get it back with Eternal Witness or whatever card you need at your graveyard. It's just a great value card and... Always nice to be able to tutor for something like that. As we're a collected company deck, we want to keep our creature count relatively high. Um, we actually play 25 creatures, which is probably the most borderline you would want to be. Um, therefore, interaction is somewhat limited. We do get to play one copy of Reclamation Sage as a creature that targets one of the most aggressive decks in the format in Affinity and can also destroy uh, annoying cards like Blood Moon. And we also play two copies of Path to Exile just because it is important to have some amount of interaction. And Path deals with pretty much every creature in the format for just a single white mana, so it's great value. On to the mana base. The mana is not too tricky. We basically need a lot of green mana uh, so we can cast a Collected Company, Chord of Calling and our mana dorks. And then from there we just want uh, a bit of white and a bit of blue to be able to hard cast our creatures if we have to. So we'll start with the Fetchlands. We play four copies of Windswept Heath 
and we play a single copy of Misty Rainforest. We play Misty Rainforest over Flooded Strand because it can fetch a basic forest and a basic island. Though, if you are looking to save some costs and play this deck, you could play Flooded Strand instead, or the fifth fetch land isn't altogether that important. You could get away with playing another tap land, for example, like another man land. We also play two copies of Temple Garden and one copy of Breeding Pool, so our fetch lands can now fetch all colours of mana. We play three copies of Razor Verge Thicket as a dual land that comes into play on tap and turns one, two, and three, which is generally when we're going to want it most. And we also play a single copy of Stirring Wildwoods as the man land in our two main colours. It gives us something to do and an additional threat in the late game, so can come in useful. For the rest of the lands, we play one copy of Wooded Bastion as the filth land in our two main colours. It's useful to make sure we don't get colour screwed and it's very useful post board when we add a lot more white into our deck. Uh, but it's also useful uh, pre board when we know we've got a lot of, we've got a big requirement for green mana so we can turn any of our lands into green producing lands, which is good. One benefit of this deck is I think it has the flexibility to run four non coloured lands. For this, I've chosen four copies of Ghost Quarter. Ghost Quarter can be good at knocking an opponent. Off of colour. If we know they run very few basics, then we can take them off of colours for the rest of the game potentially. And it obviously has its upsides against decks like Tron, which rely very heavily on their land base. As for basics, we play three forests, two plains, and an island. Uh, so we can fetch them with our fetch lands, but also if we get um, targeted with like Path of Exile or Opposing Ghost Quarters, it gives us something to fetch so we at least get some value out of it. Onto the sideboard. Again, it's a toolbox of creatures so that we can keep our creature count high and because we can tutor for them, we can deal with a lot of threats. So we'll start with two copies of Kataki Wars Wage. Basically, you bring this in against Affinity and they have to pay mana for to keep all of their artifacts alive. So it's great at decimating their board. We have two copies of Core Firewalker for against Burn. Even if they use a lightning bolt to get rid of this, it's saved you three damage and gained you one, so it's a very useful card. And we also have a copy of Eidolon of Rhetoric. It's great against decks that are looking to play a flurry of spells in a single turn. Uh, particularly useful given the emergence of Pure Steel Paladin since uh, the printing of SRAM through Vault. In the sideboard, we also have two copies of Eternal Witness, uh, a single copy of Scavenging Ooze, and a single copy of Reclamation Sage. Basically, in any matchup where these are good, you increase your numbers that you have in your deck. In any matchups where they're bad, you can decrease them. We also have access to two copies of Voice of Resurgence. Good against any deck that wants to operate at flash speed. So, uh, in particular, control decks. Uh, two copies of Kitchen Finks against the aggro decks, be they Burn or Zoo. And two more copies of Spell Sky. Again, for the same reasons. If it's good pre-board, you can load up on it post-board. If you don't particularly need it because you're against, say, Affinity, you can get rid of it. So that's the deck tech. If you're interested in it, then there will be two links in the description. One for this deck and one for a slightly cheaper deck that takes out some of the more expensive cards for acceptable substitutes. If you did like the deck tech, then uh, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it means a lot. And tell us what you thought of it in the comments. If you think there's any improvements, any cards you'd play, any cards you'd take out. Make sure you tell us that. If you uh, take your deck to FNM or a tournament and you, you you do well with it, then let us know. It's, it's good to hear of our brews having some success. And if you want to uh, find out more about the channel, then uh, make sure you subscribe. There will be more videos coming out. You can also follow us on Twitter. You can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram. If you want to uh, keep up to date with more Magic the Gathering content. Yeah, hope to see you uh, in the future.